The year is 2004. What's up guys? Today I've got Nikon's new flagship camera in. I got my pre-order from B&H Photo. It was worth the wait. I'm so excited to unbox this and show some testing with this guy. Of course, it's the new Nikon F6. You didn't think I'd be putting that digital malarkey D2H on this channel, did you? I got a lot of flack for not covering that when it came out, but mark my words, Digital is a flash in the pan. Nobody wants to carry around a VCR recorder to take their photos. Film is going to be the dominant medium for the foreseeable future, and this is the new king of the hill in terms of the whole photography world, in my opinion. I'm so excited to show this to you. Now, before anyone calls me a Luddite for not being an early adopter and throwing my money down the toilet on a digital camera, I'm not. I just picked up the iBook G4. This is a beast of a computer. This thing has a 933 megahertz processor, 256 megabytes of RAM, a whopping 40 gigabyte hard drive. It's got the blazing fast new 56K modem and it's got ethernet. And this thing only weighs like eight pounds. It's so portable, it's fantastic. And whilst we're talking computers, I just found this new underground website that launched earlier this year called The Facebook. Check it out, I don't know if it's gonna get traction like the F6 will, but it's kind of fun to be able to stalk your friends. So, the F6 has, it's been a while between drinks uh, for Nikon, let's be honest. The F5 came out in 1996, and Canon came out with their new flagship, the 1V in 2000. So why has it taken these extra four years for Nikon to come out with this beauty? Oh, so small. What a beauty. Oh, it's just beautiful. The naysayers want to say that Nikon weren't sure if they should even bring it out because of digital and whether there was room in the market for it. That's malarkey in my opinion. Nikon has been a pioneer for 80 years and this is no different. Maybe they just wanted to get the right product out with no product defects and they don't feel the need like some other companies, cough, cough, Canon, to be replacing their flagship like every five years. Eight years is a perfectly acceptable amount of time for a new flagship camera to come out. And at this rate, I would expect that by 2012, we'll see the F7 and usher in a whole new generation of film shooters to this ecosystem. Who knows what the technology is gonna be like at that time. Uh, it really feels like technology is just getting away, right? It's every year it's getting faster. Can you remember just a little while ago, we were using the early gen modems and it would take you like an hour just to connect to the message board. And now with the 56Ks, you can download an episode of South Park in like 36 hours. It's pretty incredible. So in the box, we've got the strap. Of course, you're gonna wanna wrap the camera that you're using, the book, Ah, smells so nice. The chance of digital photography taking off is about the same as books dying out. There's something so nice about having a tangible, fresh paper book in your hands. You can see how thick this is. It is a complex camera and it's actually taken the best of the innovations that they came up with for the D2H are in this. However, the best that's in this is not in that. Main thing being, film stocks. This was still, obviously, it's a 35 millimeter film camera, so you get access to all of those beautiful film stocks. Now, yes, Ilford's had a little bit of trouble this year, but Kodak and Fuji and all those guys, they're going to be here for the foreseeable future. And that dinky little D2H that's this big and has a battery this big because it's such a power-hungry pig, only has a tiny little digital chip in it with less than half the surface area of this. And you're never gonna see a full frame version of that in my lifetime anyway. This is where it's at. We're using a pair of CR1238 batteries and because of improved battery life, something that those digital guys wouldn't know anything about, this will give you even longer battery performance than the F5, which was already stellar. So let's take a look around this guy and I'll tell you what's been updated and what the special features are. 
First of all, of course, 100% viewfinder coverage. This is the top professional camera in the market now, and you can expect the top features across the board. The viewfinder has heaps of shooting information now. We've got the plus and minus exposure information, it's got focus confirmation, remaining shots, all of your different uh, camera settings are shown in the viewfinder, which is great, but otherwise you've got massive dot matrix uh, displays on the back and on the top. So really all the info you could possibly want are right there at your fingertips. This guy will do five and a half frames per second in continuous high, and if you use the MB40 battery grip, which you can use AA batteries in now, you'll get a full eight frames a second. That's crazy. This thing has a Kevlar shutter that's been tested up to 150,000 cycles. Can you imagine taking 150,000 shots in your professional career anyway? This camera's rated to it. And being the most precisely engineered shutter ever, this will go all the way to one eight thousandth of a second and they're guaranteeing that it's going to give you perfect exposure every time. Let's see a digital do that. This has 11 focus points, nine cross types, which is unbelievable, and two line types. So this is going to give you autofocus like nothing we've seen before. It's got an interval timer, it's got a user programmable function button. I don't know what I would put there because all of the features that you want are really at your fingertips already. But this is a beast, as you can see by the manual that comes with it. Maybe there'll be some things that will be really handy to put in there. It's also, of course, got multiple exposure and exposure bracketing in five different variables up to five stops in each direction. It's also got flash exposure bracketing, and this guy is a lot quieter now. It's 59 decibels or in quiet mode only 48. Of course, you don't get as much uh, frames per second then, but that reduction in vibration is really gonna help when you're trying to get slower speed handheld shots to not have such clunkiness going on in the camera. This has automatic start of film wind on and end of film rewind. And the new motors in this guy will rewind an entire roll of film in just nine seconds. Or if you've got the grip on, four seconds. Can you imagine? Four seconds out, drop the film in, it loads it on itself, and you're ready to keep shooting. This is really a game changer. Unlike Canon, who foolishly changed their mount to EFS when they brought out their digital, that's now their fourth mount on the market. The Nikon F mount has been here for over 80 years and it's here to stay. So we're all set up and ready to shoot. Before I test it out, please jump on over to macranger.com forward slash wedding and check out my new wedding photography 101 course. I take you along on a complete styled wedding day from the women getting ready all the way through to the last dance at the reception and teach you everything you need to plan, prepare and execute a successful wedding photo day shoot. Check it out and all the details are at the website. And as I said, this guy is smaller and lighter. This is now 970 grams compared to 1210 on the F5. Now a big part of the reason we're seeing that weight saving is that they're using some new thing called magnesium alloy rather than the cast magnesium that we were using in the past. So hopefully that's just as durable and we'll see it in future cameras as well. Cause I mean, this is no, you know, FM2, but this is certainly a lot smaller and more manageable than the F5, and the grip is just fantastic. I can't wait to get this out in the field. Okay, being that this is a new series where I'm gonna be looking at different equipment from different periods, how we're going to do this, I'm actually going to test it out by putting it through its paces and recreating the movie poster from the biggest film from that year. 2004, what's hot right now? million dollar baby. So I'm actually going to recreate this image using this camera. Now I've actually seen it out there in both black and white and color, so I'll probably shoot it in both. And then let's see which one I actually wanna go with. Most likely I'm going to, whether I use the black and white or color file, change it over to a black and white because I like that finished image most. So I'm gonna get in my friends AV and Dion to play the other characters. And then a lot of people say I look like Clint Eastwood anyway. I guess it's you know, my rugged manliness, um, not my wrinkles. So I'll be playing his role. So let's get them in and set it up. Okay, so very roughly with the F6 here, my handy cam back there, I'm thinking this is the layout. I've got chairs set up, so we'd have the female model here, soft light on her face from about here, 
and then we'll have the backlight coming from the other side. Then me as Clint Eastwood will be sitting quite close to her and I need to be up a little bit higher than her. Uh, you can see that his head is actually still bigger than her, so either I need to be physically really close or it has been done in post. And then the Morgan Freeman character is much smaller in frame. If we're going to try and do it all in one shot, then we're gonna need to have him a long way back positioned over her shoulder, again facing in, and he's gonna be lit from back here. So it's gonna be a series of small light sources and he needs to be down lower than the other two of us, so this is a lower stool. Now all of them, it's basically the men, it's just their heads, her, it's the whole back and her strength. But for the men, we can basically just put a tiny spotlight of light on them and it won't go past the collar. So if we need to, we can have, you know, actually slump down a little bit to get the perspective right. So we went through and tried out a couple of different modifiers and different placements. Now for this, I was actually using the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. And I thought from looking at the sample image that I would need to have Dion a long way back because he's so much smaller and that I would need to be fairly close to her because I'm a lot bigger and up higher. So I used stools so then we could make sure we were keeping all of our exact positions as I build up the shot. Now, just as any film photographer shooting in studio, I did take some test shots, some Polaroids with my 850 Polaroid camera to make sure that I was on the right track. I ended up going for a four light setup. It was the one soft light on Dion, one medium soft light on me, the softest light on the front of AV, and then a hard light on her back to bring up that muscle definition. And as I was going through, I had a small snoot on myself. I was using a rogue flash bender snoot. It was just slightly too hard, so I actually sticky taped a tissue on the front of it to give me a small amount of diffusion on that. As we went through, we refined it, we took some different samples, we took some outtakes as well, and some wide shots to show the lighting setup. And it was a really fun day. Big thanks to Dion and AV, both actually fitness models. You can check out their links in the description below. Having wrapped the shoot and actually done some shooting with a model in Manhattan a couple of days prior, I sent off my four rolls of film to Vista Image Group in Manhattan to get them to develop the film for me and then to do high res scans. Now, because this is going on YouTube, I still in the end want it to be digital. There's not much point in me holding up a contact sheet for you guys. So let's bring in the shots and take a look at them. First up, here's a selection of different ones that I shot with the model in the city. Now, it's certainly true that the different film stocks have a huge impact on the final result we're getting here. And overall, I really like them, but that is more to do with the optics and the film stock. Talking about the camera itself, it's incredibly responsive. Apart from being nice and fast, it just feels so crisp and tight. Unlike any other Nikon film camera I've used up to this point, and a world ahead of the D2H in my opinion. Looking at the shots from our Million Dollar Baby inspired shoot, it was actually a color shot that I most liked the composition most on, and it's a finer gr uh, grain pattern on that than on the black and white that I used on the day. So here's the first shot, a little bit of dodging and burning and a little bit of magic. And then here's where we are. And then throwing on some text just so that we have something comparable. And now let's compare it to the original. Eh, it's not perfect, but I think we got pretty close. Leave us a comment below, give us a thumbs up if you like this and share this with anyone that you think might be interested. So that was a really fun introduction to this series, which at the moment, needs a title. So give me your thoughts, uh, time machine, camera reviews, whatever it is. If there's a particular camera that you would like to see reviewed in the period that it was released, then please do let me know. It doesn't have to be film. It could be two years ago. It could be 80 years ago. But let me know and I'll do my best to include more as we move forward with this playlist.
Now, if you'll excuse me, my collective is waiting for me. I've got a World of Warcraft game to attend tonight. So if you're interested in the F6, do jump online and check it out. B&H have them in stock and it's a really fantastic film camera. There's nothing that comes close to it at this point in time. Let me know your thoughts. I'll see you soon. Hey folks, those of you who've been watching for a while might recognize that that is actually a re-upload from 2018. I put it back up because I want to kick this off as a brand new series where we test out equipment and remake movie posters. So let me know what gear would you like to see tested and what movie posters do you think would be great? I want to roughly align the release of the camera to the timing of the movie poster. And you might note this is from Kill Bill and that also was timed to go along with the movie poster that we just recreated. So let me know any ideas you have. Check out that wedding photography course and we'll see you soon.